Hi, welcome to the Deck Network. I'm your host, Mike Danzilio. And uh, the Deck Network, let me tell you a little bit about that, is an information gathering website. We just compile all sorts of information and we put it on our site and we talk about everything about decks. So today, our co host is Steve Sensitamore from Easy Deck. Steve, how are you doing today? How are you, Mike? How's it going? All right, yeah. Now, Steve's a deck builder and he's a very good deck builder. And uh, today, we're going to look at a deck that Steve sold in maybe May or so. Right about and, May. Yep, yeah, and um, he told me that it was a, a pretty deck. It was in, it had been maintained very well. And so I went and did a safety inspection. So we're gonna look at this video now, and uh, we're, we're gonna run out of time because the video is 11 minutes and we only have a total of 15 minutes. So let's take a look at the video. It's going to be replaced. And so let's take a look at this deck. Joe, if you want to pan up here. This deck's been around for, the gentleman says it's about 30 years old. He's uh, certainly spent a lot of time and money on it, maintaining it. But let's go up and look at things closely. Uh, first of all, let's look at the footings. Now we don't see a footing right here. So a footing has to be a 12 inch footing past the frost line in about four inches up. Now on the top here, it has to have metal connectors all the way through. Now another thing about this is that this is a metal lally column. Now this is a steel column filled with cement. Now again, the, the owner of the house did a very nice job of keeping it dry and painted so it's held up for many many years but issues that we have a lot of times with these lally columns is that they'll sit in water and they will corrode and once they corrode and rust through they, they have lost all of their strength so now we always have to use a six by six wooden post here. All right, let's take a look at the uh, the way it's attached to the house. Now this particular deck it's two by sixes, 32 inches on center. They used two by six decking, and at the time, a two by six decking was designed in order to span that kind of the width between the joists. But as the new decking now, they're all engineered for 16 inches on center. As we look up here, we can see that there is no joist hangers. There is, looks like 16 penny nails. They're put in every 16 inches, which is if they were the proper lag screws with corrosive uh, resistant material, they certainly would have lasted a long time. Now the gentleman who owns the house says that they hardly ever use the deck, so there has never been a real safety issue. But that's why we're here today. Now let's look at this, uh, at the, the, the cantilever that they have here. It looks like there's about four feet to the house side and about three or three and a half feet to the other side. Now years ago when I was building decks many many years ago we used to say the two-thirds one-third method meaning that two-thirds to one side one-third to the other side. So for instance if you had a a 12-foot deck and you had your your beam at nine foot then you could have you know a few feet past but now they're saying that you don't want to go any further than two feet past the cantilever. Now you can in some instances go past the two feet over the cantilever but it has to be engineered differently. You would use a wider joist, uh, for instance a 2x6 to a 2x8 or a 2x8 to a 2x10 and you would make it 12 inches on center. That's going to give it a little bit more strength. Right. These stairs and I'll say it again, the gentleman did a wonderful job of maintaining it, keep it painted because that's going to protect the wood from rot. But the stairs, you know, sure they, they've held up, they have a, the spacing between the, uh, the railings here is good. It's supposed to be less than four inches, but as all childproof rails now that we see, they're all on the vertical because they say that children can use it as a ladder. Uh, he has, if we look underneath here, you can see we have some nice brackets. The hardware is always very important. The, uh, it looks like it just has sheetrock screws in it. That's a no-no. You cannot use a sheetrock screw. It has to be either a joist hanger nail or a joist hanger screw. And the reason for that is that there is a shear-off strength 
with a, a joist hanger nail, a number 10, which is going to have a certain amount of strength associated with it. Now, uh, Simpson has a real nice product that would nail on here, with, of course, with the joist hangers nails, and come around and hold the bottom of this stair. Now, at the time when this deck was built, the code was probably eight or nine inches in between, but uh, what it was done nicely is there is only about three inches in between the, the railings. But the problem with that is that uh, at some point in time a child must have climbed up and fallen over. So they changed that and all the railings now have to be vertical so that the, there is no area to put a, a child's foot to climb up on it. But the height looks right. It needs to be 36 inches. Okay, right now we're looking at a deck that I did an inspection on a few months ago. And since then, the job has been contracted and permitted by our good friend Steve from Easy Decks. How you doing, Steve, Mike? How How's you doing going? there? What's going on All there? Right, All right, there. why don't you give us a little tour of the frame? Now, when we last looked at this, it was an old deck. It looked pretty good, but it was certainly one of the 20 million decks that was deemed to be unsafe. Correct. So let's take a look at this deck. Why don't you give us a little tour? Let's start with the uh, footings. Let's go on over here. All right, over here we have a 12-inch uh, round by 36-inch deep um, footing. Uh, this is basically what's supporting our deck. Uh, again, this is by code from our region. Uh, again, it's 36 inches deep, and um, from there we have our post base bracket, which is a six by six post base, which connects from the cement to the post that connects to the six by six, and then from the six by six, if you follow around, we have our six by six our brackets that connect to our girder beam. And uh, if you notice, the girder beam, it's spliced directly in the center of the 6x6. Six six. Uh, you don't want that splice being off to the side because that is a weak point. Okay, I, can, I notice that you also have your hurricane ties up right, here. From, from, our, from our girder beam, we need hurricane ties to connect to our joists. Uh, again, it's a, just a positive connection from the ground up. All right, Steve, why don't you show us your uh, ledger connection and how you put it together here? Well, if, if you look up top, we have um, a Simpson uh, ledger board uh, screws. Um, and again, in this area, the town was uh, okay with them. In other towns, they want to see lags, but uh, you, you got to ask your local building department to see what they recommend. And also, if you notice, we have a uh, lateral lateral tension device or lateral tension device from uh, Simpson specifically uh, again this is a, a code that, that that has come upon us uh, within the last year it's required to be placed on two two sides of the deck basically on two ends of the deck and what it does it connects f the positive connection from the deck itself into the house so basically what you have to do is you have to go into the house um, if the ceiling is unfinished, then you're lucky. If it's finished, then you're going to need to cut a hole in, your, in the ce homeowner ceiling in order to properly connect this uh, to the house. Deck. Right. So stairs, as always in any deck, be it a second story deck, a two foot high deck, uh, stairs are, are extremely important because there is a lot more load to, to, to weight put, put on the stairs than the actual deck itself. Um, if you notice here, we have our stair stringers, which are 2 by 12s uh, We have them set uh, 12 inches on center. Um, and it's again, it's a second story deck, so we got about 14 risers. Okay, Steve, why don't you show us the connection to the deck with the stair stringers? Right where here. That is a, a stair stringer bracket. Uh, what it does, it connects the stair stringer to the deck and it provides a sheer load uh, strength on it. So basically when you're, when you're stepping up on that stairs, it's preventing the, the stair stringer from shearing downwards. Um, you know, other guys would use screws or, or a bolt behind it. That is definitely not strong enough because remember the wood can rip and, and, and uh, shear off. Okay, Steve, we talked about this a few times before. These decks are not overbuilt. This is the minimum requirements. Is that correct? Right. This deck, I, I would say, is a minimum requirement. Um, we we always want to at least build your deck to the minimum uh, code requirement. 
again, because you want a safe deck and, and you want to enjoy your deck without having to worry if it's going to fall off or not. Well, it seems obvious that this deck is not going to fall. It's going to last as long as the, the decking is going to last. And that's always the wood is being treated, and that's going to last whenever, 40 years or so. But the hardware is the weak link in all of these projects. And so we're trying to, that's what we're trying to emphasize in this uh, video here is that the hardware is a very important or the weak link in deck. So we make sure that the hardware is okay. good. All right, okay, the deck is done. And Steve, it looks great. Why don't you give us a little tour? Sure, Mike. Okay. Um, we have here a uh, traditional walnut rail from uh, TimberTech with white sleeves. It's a great accent to the deck. You got the uh, walnut picture frame border going around the deck. Um, then if you scroll over here, we have a, uh, a beautiful gate made by uh, Curvier Deck. Um, it's a wonderful gate with beautiful hardware with a key, safety for children. Uh, any second story deck you should have a gate on top. And this gate, as you can see, ties in with the rest of the rails and it just looks awesome. All right, well, let's go down and look underneath because uh, we have some beautiful columns down the bottom here. Stairs now. All right, now I'm going to show you guys the stairs. Um, again, it's all timber tech and this is what a finished stair should look like. Uh, we picture frame the stairs to give it a nice reveal all around. Uh, that way you don't see exposed edges. It's uh, just a nicer look. Now we're, now we're looking at the uh, the raised panel columns that Steve put in on this deck. Steve, why don't you give us a little tour of that? Sure. These are PVC columns, um, basically uh, routed out raised panel out of uh, AZEC, um, trimmed with, of course, AZEC trim, bottom and top, so it's a virtually maintenance-free product. Um, and it's good to go. All right, Steve, that deck is beautiful. The customer's happy, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, very, uh, very I happy. love the, uh, the, uh, the, the curved gate. Yeah, the gate the, came Yeah, the, with the so arch that, top that on it. That just tied everything in. Yeah, and the, uh, those raised panel columns look great also. And, uh, okay, we don't have a whole lot of time, but the, we want to emphasize in this type of video is that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link and the hardware is the weak link and that's what we're really trying to emphasize on some of these that and these decks are not like as we said they're not overbuilt so no. this is the way they have to be so if you're looking at a contractor to build your deck and he's not telling you about some of these parts then he's not giving you the whole information and a lot of times they don't know so that's why I always say there's a deck builder professional deck builder like Steve and then there's contractors who think they can build a deck, or, well, I should say a carpenter that thinks that they can build a deck. And that's where you're going to run into the problems. Uh, so be very careful on who you hire, or better yet, you can hire Steve. Yeah. Steve, you have anything to add to this deck? Um, again, on a, on a deck, you're spending already an X amount of dollars. Um, and again, you want to make sure it's done right from beginning to end. And the first step is, of course, um, finding a good contractor. Second step is uh, having a good uh, architect to deal with and the architect and the contract that should work together because there are steps that architects do miss as far as hardware is concerned and as a proper deck builder you know what needs to be put on there and uh, and again just you want to make sure you do it right by by taking the right steps and building the, your, your deck. Okay great so we're going to wrap this up now you can also find us on Twitter Facebook and YouTube so if you do a research for your backyard project or you want to watch all of our videos because this is what we do is we just talk about decks all the time or if you have a friend that's interested in a deck you can certainly refer it to them now our format is to produce videos that are 15 minutes or less in length and we're getting tight to that one on this particular one sure. and we're going to post one to two a week and in each episode we'll pick a topic now today we pick Steve's deck and uh, we'll discuss it so if you have any questions comments or a suggestion for an episode on the deck network you can write me if you want to be on the the uh, the deck network program just like Steve is right here you can uh, come and be here on in person or via Skype we certainly have the technology and uh, you can contact me at mike at the deck and thanks again and have a great day